Let's take a closer look now at the type of governor technology that we typically see on small gas engines. And really, small gas engines are two different kinds of mechanisms that we use. And these are the mechanisms that are sensing the engine speed. So we kind of need to start thinking about these, these pieces, these parts, these mechanisms as a sensor. So they're doing something as the engine speed changes. As, a, as the engine speeds up or slows down, something different is happening, okay? So two different kinds that we commonly see on engine are a centrifugal type of, of governor and a pneumatic. And we'll look at both of these. We're going to start with the centrifugal because it's pretty similar to what we saw earlier with the fly ball weights. And it's the same basic concept, except they don't look like balls anymore. There's a different type of mechanism. And this is one that you would typically find in a small gas engine, uh, where this is a, a gear, a white gear that spins. Um, these metal parts here are hinged at the hinge point there and a hinge point right there. So as that spins, those metal parts want to fly out. And what's happening is in the middle, there's a piece of plastic. And so picture my hands as those fly balls. As those fly balls go out, my thumbs want to come up. And so what happens is as those fly weights go out, as it spins faster and faster, my thumbs push up and it pushes this little plastic piece up in the middle. We'll see in a second how that is then connected to the linkage that's going to be controlling the speed of the engine. So that's the mechanical system, an example of a mechanical system. The pneumatic system we'll come back and look at later as well. But the pneumatic system, if on your most of the flywheels on a small gas engine, there's fins on there, cooling fins, that cause air to flow past that engine to keep it from getting too hot. Well, as that air is flowing, the speed of that air flowing is going to be dependent on the speed of the engine. So the faster the engine turns, the more those fans, those fins are going to be, the more air they're going to be moving. So what we do is we put a vein, a plastic vein or some really light material in that airstream. So as the air moves, it blows that vein, pushes that vein one way or the other. So again, it's just sensing the speed. So as the engine speeds up, it's going to move. It's going to try to move or it's going to try to do something different. So that's what a mechanical mechanism does. And the, again, showing one uh, centrifugal with, with centrifugal weights and one with pneumatic, just looking at airflow and the vein on there. So let's look a little bit closer at how that mechanical governor is connected to the linkage then to be able to control the engine speed. So this is that governor, a side view of that governor mechanism. So this is the plastic gear down there that spins. So this whole thing spins on this shaft. And like I said, we had those two weights that are hinged. Here are the fly weights, those yellow things right there. And there, there's kind of like my thumb. So as those weights go out, these pieces here, like my thumb, want to go up and they push this little plastic cap. So this is a cap that sits on top of the post right here. It pushes that cap up. So the faster it spins, the more that it pushes up. Now, there's a mechanism up here then that's connected somehow to the throttle. This is the throttle plate in the carburetor. So as that we're showing right here, that throttle plate is wide open. So as I would pull on this mechanism, so the hinge point is right here. So if I would pull this out, that's going to pull on this shaft. That's going to want to close that throttle plate. It's going to want to slow the engine down. So you see we have a linkage, we have a mechanism that's connected to the governor somehow. And the, the linkages will look different and we'll have the chance to tear them apart and actually look at what they look like in an engine. But now the interesting thing is we are now connecting this to a spring. So we have a governor lever spring, they call it, or a governor adjustment spring. You'll see it called a little bit different thing in different resources. Uh, but it basically is a spring that's trying to hold this thing to the left as you look at it, which in this picture would actually be holding that throttle plate open. So this would be the state that you would see this when the engine is shut off. So the engine's not moving. These flywheels, um, flyballs are not, flyweights are not going out at all. So they're not trying to push this thing up. So it's down, it's low. The spring has this thing pulled over, has that throttle 
wide open. So I'd let as much stuff go through there as we can. So now we start the engine. So the engine starts to move. So now we've got air flowing through here. The throttle is wide open. But we also get these fly weights starting to spin. And now they're going to put some force on this thing. So as you see on the right over here, the fly weights start moving out. And they start pushing up. And again, this becomes a balancing act. We talked with the flyweights that there's always some kind of a balancing act. Well, here it's a balancing act between the centrifugal force of these flyweights as they're going out and this spring that's trying to keep the throttle open. So the spring here is trying to open the throttle, but these things are pushing up on this little plastic piece, which is pulling the mechanism, twisting this linkage this way, and that's starting to close the throttle. So what you see here is this governor controlling the speed because as the engine goes too fast, these weights go further and further out, pushes this thing up, pulls the linkage this way, and that's going to close that throttling valve, let less fuel go into that engine, slow it down, say, whoa, 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 you're going too fast, slow down. Okay, and then on the converse, if the engine gets loaded up and starts to slow down, now these weights will come back in because the engine goes slower. That's going to allow this thing to come down. The spring is going to pull it to the left. That's going to let the linkage go the other way going to open up that throttle plate, allow more in to be able to try to speed the engine up or to compensate for the load that's being put on the engine. So that's how we get this balancing act now with a spring, with a governor spring. And this also gives us the ability to control the speed of the engine. So if I want my engine to run slower in general, I want my set point to be a little bit slower. So maybe on my riding lawnmower, I have a throttle lever on my riding lawnmower. So I want to pull it down and not have it running quite wide open. It's too noisy. I don't need it to go that fast or for whatever reason. I just want it to run a little bit slower. So I pull that down. Or if I want to make it run faster, I push it up. What I'm doing is actually changing the tension on the spring. So I'm actually moving this anchor point of the spring and pulling on the spring or relaxing the spring. So if I want the engine to run faster, so I want the, the, the adjusted speed or my target speed to be higher, what I actually do is pull this thing over, put more tension on the spring. What's that going to do? More tension on the spring is going to push this thing down, push against these fly weights now. That's going to allow the mechanism to go this way, open it up, a little bit more air fuel comes through there, the engine speeds up. Now as the engine speeds up, these balls, fly weights are going to come back out, and that's going to balance then. It's going to push this up and eventually close it down and balance with my spring. So again, it's this spring tension, the tension of the spring, balanced with these fly weights, how hard they're going out, and those are affected by the speed of the engine. The faster the engine speeds, runs, the farther out they go. So really there's a terminology funny thing going on here because we talk about the throttle and I even mentioned this and I said on my riding lawnmower that I set the throttle at a certain speed. Well you really don't set the throttle because your connection, that connection on that engine control is not actually connected to the throttle plate on the carburetor at all. So really a more correct terminology would be that I'm adjusting the carburetor or, or, or the, uh, the governor. I'm adjusting the governor spring or setting the governor. So that should be on my engine control on that lawnmower dash. That should be my governor adjustment, not my throttle adjustment. So it's a funny term. We use the terms funny in the industry. We always talk about that being a throttle where you get on the tractor, open the throttle, close the throttle. We use that terminology all the time. But I just kind of want to blow your mind a little bit and let you think about that is technically, if you want to get really technical and nerdy about it, it's not really a throttle because it's not connected to the throttle. All it's doing is adjusting the governor spring. So you're putting more tension on the spring or less tension on the spring. That's all it's doing. So a little bit of a confusing thing there, but something that at least I want to think about. And it may help us to, to really hone in on what's going on, how the governors are working. Again, that balancing act between the force, centrifugal force of these weights as they're spinning out, and the spring that's trying to open the throttle. So the weights are trying to close the throttle, spring is trying to open the throttle plate. And that's, the, that's a mechanical, so that's the centrifugal weights, 
and how the mechanical works. If we look at the pneumatic system, it's very similar concept. It's a balancing act. But the difference is now, instead of the, the centrifugal weights that are trying to physically move out, now I've got this flywheel that's blowing air. And the more air that it blows, the more it's going to want to try to move this vein. So here is the pneumatic vein that's beside the flywheel, pivot point right there. Air coming off is going to blow on that vein and try to pull this, this throttle. So if we see here, the faster that this flywheel goes, it's pulling this, this pneumatic plate, pushing that pneumatic plate, and it's going to try to close the throttle. So the, the pneumatic, or the, the governor system, the, the pneumatic sensing mechanism, the faster the engine goes, it's trying to pull the throttle plate closed. Let's not let so much air go through this carburetor. But my governor spring now is pulling it open. So again, if I want my engine to run a little faster, what I'm going to do is move this spring up, put more tension on this spring. So as I adjust my throttle, that's really what I'm doing, is lengthening out this spring so that it's pulling a little bit harder. And then this engine has to run a little bit faster before it can slow the, the throttle down, before it starts to throttle the engine back. So that allows the engine to move a little bit faster. Okay, so that's again the same concept, balancing act against the spring, but the balance here is from pneumatic force from the air that's coming off of those, those cooling fins on the flywheel, and the faster the engine goes, the more air that comes off of those cooling fins. That's the balancing act. Now, one of the things I want to think about here is the minimum speed, and I'll go back to the argument that I had with the textbook where your textbook says that it, it, it controlled, that a governor controls the maximum and a minimum speed. And really, it doesn't control the minimum speed. So let's think about this. Let's say that, that I just let this, this spring go, so I wanted to go back to low idle. So I'm on my lawnmower, I got to the end of the yard, I just want to shut it down, you know, or I got to get off and pick up some garbage that's laying in the yard or whatever. So I just pull the throttle down to a low idle. And what that does is release the tension on this spring completely. Now, what's going to happen? So this pneumatic force is going to push that plate shut and it's going to pull this throttle plate. And if there's no tension on this spring to resist it, it's going to pull that throttle plate clear, closed, clear shut. What that would do is basically shut the engine off. So if the spring was gone, this throttle plate would go completely closed, the engine would shut off. Well, I don't want that. I want the engine to run at some minimum speed. So the way we typically control the minimum speed, at least on small gas engines, is that there's a stop on this throttle plate. And that's usually an external adjustment on the carburetor. You've got another screw that you turn with a screwdriver that says, okay, this throttle plate can go shut, but I don't want it to go too far shut because I don't want it to shut my engine completely off. So when my engine is idling, I'm going to have a minimum so the throttle won't go completely shut. It'll allow a little bit of air to sneak around it, the air-fuel mixture, to be able to go into the engine and maintain that engine running so I don't have to restart it. It doesn't just shut off. So that's what the minimum speed is. So that's really not part of the governor. And that's why, again, I take some exception to that third point that your tech, textbook said. Maybe it's splitting hairs and getting a little over technical. But again, it's something that I think will help us to really understand what the governor does and what it doesn't do. And so in this particular case, at the minimum speed, um, that, that screw, the setting, is what's going to control what the minimum speed is, what that minimum idle speed is. Now, when we go to electronic control systems, where I've got a, a speed sensor and a little computer that's controlling engine speed, and I set my throttle down to zero, then the computer is going to take over. So in that electronic governor system, it's going to look at the engine speed and know that, okay, this engine can't run any slower than, say, whatever, 750 RPMs. So it's going to let that engine get down to 750 50 RPMs, and then it will control the throttle plate and keep it at the minimum speed. So in that case, yeah, the governor system probably is controlling the minimum speed as well as the maximum speed, but in a lot of our small gas engines, that's not the case. And so I just wanted to make that, that clarification and make sure that we, again, dig a little bit deeper and really have a good, solid understanding of what these mechanisms are doing and what's happening there. So that's the, the governor. That's what the governor does. So what we will take a look at next 
is is some of the control uh, for for the governor and some of the control uh, philosophies.